when night has fallen, when fear is coming, still you're calling me. When faith is lost and my hope exhausted, you will be my strength. When my mind says I'm not good enough, God, you're enough for me. I've decided I'm not giving up, cause you won't give up on me, you won't give up on me. season you keep repeating promises to me Whoa, now there's no stopping when you have started till it is complete when my mind says I'm not good enough God you're enough for me I've decided I'm not giving up so excited that you are here. You decided to join us live here. I see uh, Mia. I see Ashley. Uh, I see Ryan in the booth there. Uh, awesome. Um, so I just wanted to welcome you. Hey, if you want to join everybody here on Zoom, that would be so, so amazing. Uh, if you want to go to hcfcornwall.ca slash Zoom, you can uh, join the party. Enjoy church together. We can't be here in person, uh, but we can do church together. We can't uh, we, we won't have to worry about that. We can just do church. Uh, first timers. Hey, if this is your first time here at Harvest, well, maybe not at Harvest, but online, go to hcfcornwall.ca slash connect. We have a special gift ready for you. Kids, parents, if you want to get your kids sorted with uh, Kids Church, we got a special program for them. If you want to go to hcfcornwall.ca slash kids, um, we've got a program ready for them. They're going to so, so enjoy it. So, Lord Jesus, I just pray, God, today, God, church isn't happening live, and it's not the same. But, God, I'm reminded, God, that you say that you don't work with the same. You don't work with the same 
uh, from yesterday, God. You work with something new, God. Every single day you do something new, God. And God, we're in a new season right now. So Jesus, even though we might feel like this, we've done this, we've done that, God. God, this is something new. And I just pray, God, that you're just going to so bless our time, anoint our time, God, here today. I just pray, God, you're going to stir every heart, God, as we're praying and we're fasting, God, that you're going to do something new in every one of our lives. As we retrofit our faith for our prayer life, God, that you're just going to do an amazing, amazing work, God. I pray this in Jesus' name. Amen.
When oceans rise, my soul rests in your embrace. For I am yours, and you are mine. I am yours, and you are mine. I am yours, and you. you wherever you are just focus in on him he's our god of peace and chaos he's our healer he's our provider whatever's lingering on your mind whatever's heavy on your spirit just give it to him and better yet just fix your eyes on him i just feel like this morning there's just a presence of his peace and whoever needs that just take it we're not going to rush this morning we're just going to be relaxed in his presence. You're all we need, Jesus, Jesus. You are our peace, Jesus, Jesus, you're all we need. I 
sing praises, give you honor, worthy Jesus. We give you praise and all of the honor, you are our God, the one we live for. We give you praise, all of the glory, God. We give you praise and all of the I see glory falling in this place. I see hope restored and healing of all disease. And I sing praises, I sing praises. I give you honor, worthy Jesus. We give you praise. so good, God. You are, God, I'm just so thankful for your presence, God. No matter where we are, God, that you meet us where we are. Wherever we are, you meet us there, God. I'm just so thankful for that, God. Thank you, God, for this time of worship, Jesus. Hey, if you have any uh, prayer requests, there's just so many things we could be praying for, and whether it's for yourself, for a loved one, uh, for a coworker, whoever it may be, uh, you can go uh, and just email, text, leave a message. There's an info box down below. Uh, it should be popping up. Uh, just send the request. There's power when we gather together and we pray. And so we just want to see prayers get answered. So do that right now. Uh, if you're on Facebook uh, or YouTube, just comment. Um, whatever prayer you might have. If you want to give, uh, giving looks a little bit different. Can't drop it off this week uh, in the box, but uh, you can go to hcfcornwall.ch slash give, um, and, uh, or you can text any dollar amount at 84321. Sermon notes are so, so important. I, uh, as we're just joining in our small group season now, um, I just... 
um, <laughs> we've been doing it in our group. We've been using the sermon notes, and uh, they're really helpful. Uh, so if you get that, you can go to hcfcarmel.ca slash notes. Um, you can follow along with the sermon today, and they are awesome there. I see Ashley with her notes already printed out, which is awesome. Um, hey, we're going to have a really, really important video. I just encourage you to stick around. Um, it, and uh, just kind of like watch this. Yeah, Karen, we're going to be praying for that. We're going to be praying for that. Uh, yeah, just stick around. We're going to be launching a video there. So just, it's really important. Make sure to, uh, to stick around for that. Hey, everyone, and thanks again for joining us online this morning. Part two of our Retrofit Your Prayer Life series in a few minutes. But just before we do, I ask you to help us by filling out a quick survey. As COVID continues to complicate seemingly everything, we want to ensure we're doing our best to keep Harvest connected, growing, and spiritually healthy. But our physically every week makes it unusually difficult to tell whether or not that's the case. The survey will just take a few, it'll really help us do kind of a quick health check on Harvest that we're hoping is gonna help us to stay connected and growing despite not being able to gather together physically. Thanks for your help, and hopefully we'll be able to gather together again really, really soon. So go ahead and head to hcfcoral.ca forward slash survey right now. Take a few minutes to fill out the survey, and the service will continue again in just a few minutes. Wow, it is so great to have you a part of our service today. I've been watching the chat boxes and I uh, so appreciate 
people telling us where they're listening in from and, and uh, where you're tuning in from is, well, we're in one of those lockdowns one more time. I want to give a shout out to the team that made it possible today uh, for all the technology to happen. There's a lot that has to take place for us to bring you the service. Big shout out to the worship team this morning as Karen, thank you, did such a great job. And Ryan, who oversees the tech and production uh, to all of the all of the things that make this happen. And thank you for uh, those of you that are tuning in today that took time to do our survey. It's super important for us just to really know uh, where everybody is and you'll help us so, so very much. Help us do our job to serve you better as you fill out that survey. Hey, so we're gonna start Retrofit Your Prayer Life Part Two. Last week we looked at Esther and as we kind of went through the story of Esther, I highlighted some parallels that had spiritual parallels for us. Now, the story of Esther really happened, a historical, uh, very real uh, historical account uh, of Esther who, who becomes queen in Persia, a Jewish girl. But the parallels are outstanding and help us really understand our own prayer life and how the Lord has wants to partner with us. And so just to highlight and some recap some of those thoughts from last week that the king was looking for a queen. And King Jesus is looking for a queen. The Bible calls us the bride of Christ. And it's not a token queen, as we're going to see today. It is a co-sovereign, a ruling, reigning queen at the side of the king. Esther was brought into the kingdom for such a time as this. I believe that uh, you're serving Jesus today uh, for such a time as this, that you might bring the king's rule into your workplace, uh, into your family, uh, into your church, into your nation, every place. God wants to use you this morning uh, to facilitate his kingdom. Only the king's decree could reverse Haman's plan. Only a king's decree. I think Satan has a decree upon the earth. He wants to kill. He wants to rob. He wants to destroy. Closer to home, he wants to do all those things in the realm of influence that we live in. Only the king has the power to reverse that. And as we partner in prayer, we can ask, we can declare, we can decree with the king and reverse Haman's or the devil's plans. Esther dressed the part to come into the king's presence as the queen. This morning we did it. We came to the Lord in our garments of praise instead of the garments of heaviness. And we came to the Lord in our robes of righteousness this morning. He supplied all those robes. I'm so glad I don't have to come up with those things. He gives them to us by, by his grace. Esther was welcomed into the king's presence. Each and every time we come into God's presence, he welcomes us. He's there as we just uh, intentionally take that moment and pray from presence. We pray from the place of presence. We're not going to pray from the place of feeling, you know, distance from the Lord, but we saw Esther come into his presence. The touch, the ask. The touch, the ask. The ask in prayer always comes as a result of being aware of his presence and praying from a position of his presence. Esther released the king's decree by asking. Most of us that are watching today would know that I really enjoy the outdoors. I love being out in the woods. Specifically, um, uh, I like to hunt, and I've, I've done that for years and years. Uh, no animals were heard in the filming of this today. Uh, if you're an animal lover, I love that you're an animal lover. Uh, I am too. Uh, I just love harvesting uh, the animals that God gives us. And, uh, and I've just done that over, over the years. And uh, recently... I was given some permission by a landowner. Actually, somebody from our church uh, heard, <laughs> heard me tell a story like this and said, oh, we've got some land you could hunt on. And that's like a super blessing to me because there's not too many opportunities, uh, not a lot of land left to do that on. And so the first time I went to hunt on that land, the landowner met me in the driveway and we walked the perimeters of that property. The landowner having authority over that land, uh, gave me the authority to be on that property. And I knew exactly, exactly where I could be and where I couldn't be. A number of years ago, uh, similar story, but I uh, didn't know exactly where the landowner's property was. And I found myself, um, as I was uh, walking through the woods, I came up on another hunter who was not very happy at all. It was during deer season. Not very happy at all. I'd walked up on his deer stand 
And he explained very clearly this was his land and I needed to get off. <laughs> so when I don't know where I'm supposed to be out hunting, it's, it can be really uncomfortable. Uh, I don't have the freedom. I, I don't really know, am I supposed to be here? Is this the right place to be? I use the analogy, the two differences there, because I believe that as we kind of unfold, and today is about the same as last week, kind of the high level what and why of prayer. I want you to be super comfortable with where you are in the place of prayer. I want you to know that you've been given authority. I don't want you kind of tippy-toeing around in prayer. Am I supposed to be here? Is this what we're supposed to be doing? Can we do this? I want you to begin moving in the place of prayer with a, a sense of freedom, a sense of, I know I have authority to be here. I know this is what I'm supposed to be doing, and begin releasing the authority that God has given us in prayer. I don't want us asking safe prayers. I don't want us praying little prayers. I believe God's called us to ask big and to receive big, not only for ourselves, but as we release the authority into the realm that we live in here on the earth, uh, as we're going to hear next week from Frankie Coleman, as he looks at the Lord's prayer, thy kingdom come, thy will, God, what God wants here on the earth as it is in heaven. Now, I believe there's some things that God does that he wills, and there's just no if, ands, or buts. God just does what he does. He's God. But the scriptures also talk about God's desire. God wills that none should perish, that none would go to hell, that nobody would not hear the gospel and respond to it. And yet, that being God's will, God's desire, it, it, not everybody gets saved. Why is that? Because there are some areas of God's desire that he tells us, I desire this. And he partners with us to fulfill and bring God's will on the earth. He's saying, this is what I want to his bride, to his queen. And in the place of prayer, we can bring it about with him. And so today, the what and why of prayer. And the next week, we're going to get into more of the how-tos of prayer. And so I want to show you some property lines today. I want to give you some confidence about when you come into the presence of God, how to declare and how to release because he's given you authority. Genesis 1.28 says that God blessed them. He's talking about Adam and Eve, and he's talking about humanity. God blessed them. Be fruitful and multiply. Fill the earth. Govern it. Very important word. Reign over uh, the creation. And so in some of your translations that you might be reading this morning, that God gave humanity dominion over the earth. Literally, Adam and Eve were given the title deed to planet earth. The title deed. It wasn't just the permission to be on the property. They were the land owners. They had the, the actual title deed to the earth. The psalmist David said it this way in Psalm uh, 8 verse 6. You put him, meaning uh, mankind, humanity, and it is a reference to, to Jesus uh, as well. You put him, but it is speaking of humanity, in charge of everything you made. Everything is put under his authority. That was God's purpose in the garden. That's what is being restored back to us as we're going to talk about and understand these authority lines today and what you've been given. So last week, Esther being welcomed, Esther having a function, but I want you uh, to really have this in faith to know what authority you have in prayer because faith comes by hearing, hearing the word of God. Now, when Adam sinned in the garden, he literally, he turned his back on God, and he turned to Satan, he literally passed the title deed of planet Earth over to Satan. He gave it to Satan. Let, let, me, let me give you an illustration today that I hope will powerfully illustrate a point of how real Adam's authority was. Let's say you're uh, in your job, uh, you have a business, uh, and you have a direct report to your boss, but you're like, a next level manager to the main to the main boss. And you've been given clearance to make deals, business deals on behalf of the business up to $50,000. You're really excited because in your job, you've had an opportunity to, to uh, approach and you've begun to close the deal on a $30,000 job. Now, that's well within your authority, well within what the boss has given you. And so you can't wait to close this deal. You've put energy into it. You're excited about it. And um, 
the morning that this is supposed to close, the morning you're going to sign all the paperwork and celebrate, you come into the office, the boss is waiting for you. response like what what is going on and if the boss were to say to you listen i'm the boss and i can do whatever i want i'm kiboshing the deal the fact that he's the boss was never a question in your mind what you would be questioning is what authority did i actually have in the first place if you're coming in and diminishing my authority that you apparently gave me what it would tell you is you never had any authority in the first place that the authority really rested in the boss that you report to. Now, I want you to think about this. In the moment that, that Adam and Eve are handing, getting ready to hand over the title deed of planet Earth, it's the moment that sin is going to enter into God's creation. It's the moment that Satan is going to own everything. It's the moment the sickness is going to start taking its toll. It's the minute that decay, um, that there wasn't, there, the Bible talks about storing in heaven where there isn't moth and rust and corruption and decay. And the earth was in the condition of not having those things. And in a moment, just before Adam and Eve are going to make this decision to hand over the title deed, God could have come in and kiboshed the deal. But he didn't. And that tells us this morning how real the authority Adam and Eve had. And that God, it was so real that God would not touch it. He would not diminish it because it was the way that God had set it up on planet Earth. To take away Adam's authority or to step into that situation would have meant he didn't have it in the first place. Would have meant you and I don't really have it in the first place, as we're going to see this morning. So... Could God have taken it back? He could have, but he, God had, had, had positioned this and God had set it up not to. And God was being true to what was set in place. So if God can't take it back from Satan, who can? Well, if God gave that authority to a human being, then only another human being could take the title deed back, where man could be free from Satan's hold over the earth and over mankind. Well, there isn't such a man because every person who is born in, in, the, in Adam's race is born in sin. We're, we're born separated from God. We're born as uh, a serving the taskmaster of Satan and the taskmaster of sin, and we're under the curse of sin, under the curse of the law. The only way that humanity could get it back is if there were a human that Satan had no claim on. If there was a human that Satan had no legal right to. Galatians 4.4. Some of you know where I'm going with this, but I want you, don't, don't get ahead of me. Don't, yeah, yeah, I understand this. Jesus did all this for us. This is great. No, I, I, I'm walking you through the property lines this morning. It's tedious. I know you want to get hunting. <laughs> you want to get to prayer. You, you say, yes, I get this. We're, we're, we, we want to get excited about prayer. I know. But let's walk through this morning and really understand. The, and, and just bear with me if this is tedious for a moment. Galatians 4.4. 4. But when the time had fully come, the time when God had said, Satan's rule has gone long enough. And in the plan of God, God allowed Satan to run the course of sin for a time to show mankind there was no way to get back into that place with God except that God would provide a way, except that God would make a way by his grace and by his mercy for us. And when that time had fully come, God sent his son. Now watch this, Galatians 4.4, born of a woman, born under the law. The incarnation, that's a kind of a fancy word for uh, God becoming human, God taking on human form, God taking on uh, Jesus becoming a man. And so though it's a mystery that Jesus could be all man and all God, the scriptures teach it clearly. He was all God and all man. And, and Jesus came to earth born in a manger as a man, a man who Satan had no claim on. Because he wasn't born in the line of Adam. He had no sin in him. 
In fact, the scriptures call him the last Adam, the fulfilling Adam, the Adam that will take human race back to God's intention in the garden. Now, this is interesting. So Satan, I don't think, fully understood how this was all going to play out. Because if he did, he never would have allowed, or at least he would have resisted, Jesus going to the cross. Now, think of it this way. If you're Satan and you hold the keys of hell, or yeah, to hell and death, the finality of having the title deed of this, uh, uh, of this realm called earth, and, and we're, you know, the place, this realm that humanity lives in, if you can get Jesus, this human being, to die, then I've got him, speaking from Satan's perspective. I've got him. I've got him in the grave, and I'm not going to let him go. So Satan was very happy to have Jesus go to the cross and to die, not understanding its purpose in God. So when Jesus began his earthly ministry, uh, he fasted and prayed for 40 days and 40 nights, and Satan tempts him. Now look at this temptation. It's very interesting. Matthew uh, chapter 4. Again, the devil took him, Jesus, to a very high mountain. Now I don't think this is a, a literal mountain like Mount Everest. I think it's a, a high place in the spirit realm that Satan lifted Jesus up into and showed him all the kingdoms of the world and their splendor. And the kingdoms is pro there. I believe that's kingdoms before Jesus. I believe that's the kingdoms during his reign. And I believe it was the kingdoms after uh, Jesus. And that's just conjecture on my part, but the kingdoms of the world, the powerful societies, the things that were happening here in the realm called earth, all of their glory and splendor. And, and Satan said, I will give this to you. So Satan knew he had ownership to it. He knew he was holding a title deed. And he said to Jesus, I'll give it to you if you partner with me. If you come under me, if you co-rule and co-reign with me by worshiping me, I will give this to you. Well, of course, Satan had no intention of ever giving it to Jesus in the sense that God would give it to Adam or, or God would give it to us. Satan would still be holding on to it because he's a manipulative leader. He's a lying leader and a deceptive leader. And he was trying to uh, deceive Jesus into a shortcut of how God was about to give him this. John chapter 14. Jesus is having a conversation with his disciples before going to the cross. I'm showing you the property lines today. You need to get this. You need to understand this. This is so important. One human being that could take back, take back the title deed of this earth. The kingdoms of our Christ, the kingdoms of our God, as, uh, as we hear uh, Handel's Messiah. And he shall reign forever and ever. Come on, follow me this morning. It's not Satan ruling and reigning forever and ever. It's the Christ. It's the anointed one. It's Jesus who came to this earth. And Jesus, before going to the cross, he says, I will not be talking with you much more like this. And he was clearly explaining to the, him that he was about to go to the cross. He's about to die. He said, I can't talk to you about this anymore because the chief of this godless world is about to attack. Satan thought he had him. Well, Jesus knew better, but Satan didn't. But don't worry. He has nothing on me. He was telling them there will be three days. I will go in the grave, but I won't be staying. Why? Because he has no hold on me. He has nothing on me, no claim to me. But so the world might know uh, that how thoroughly I love the Father, I am carrying out my Father's instructions right down to the last detail. Oh, come on. This is amazing to me. Hebrews chapter 2, verse 14 says, Because God's children are human beings, made of flesh and blood, we were the ones given the title deed. We are the only ones that could take that title deed back. Why? Because God gave it to us. God, God, God built the universe this way, that he would have a race of people that he would co-rule and co-reign with, not some kind of a puppet, not kind of in some kind of condescending matter. I'm God and you're, you know, you're, no, God won't step in. We were flesh and blood. The son also became flesh and blood for only as a human being 
could he die. And only by dying could he break the power of the devil who had who had past tense, who had <laughs> the power of death. Only in this way could he set free all who have lived their lives as slaves to the fear of dying. When Jesus died on the cross, I am sure Satan thought, I've got him. I would love to see the video clip of this, and I believe we're going to see it someday. God's going to reveal it. He's going to show us uh, what, what I'm going to read in Colossians in a moment, what Colossians says took place behind the scenes in the spirit realm. But this human Jesus is different. Satan had no claim on him. So when Jesus came up out of the grave and grabbed the title deed back, the power of sin and death no longer holds mankind, no longer, it's not just Listen now, it's not just mankind. It's not just human beings. It's the place that God created for human beings to be, planet Earth. The place that Adam and Eve had the title deed to. It's not just the race that's set free. It's the place that the race was set. And so now, through Christ, and Romans tells us that though creation has been groaning because of its captivity to the pronouncement of Satan on it, sin entered the world. Now, as mankind breaks that curse through the authority that God has given us, we can begin in the place of prayer, partnering with the Lord. Why? Because uh, Jesus now took it back and said, give me those keys. They don't belong to you anymore. And Colossians says, having disarmed principalities and powers. That means... ...over them. I believe we're going to get to see the behind-the-scenes footage of that uh, on one day. Jesus said, I'll take that. <laughs> it belongs to me. It no longer belongs to you. Now, most of us would understand that in terms of Satan's hold on an unbeliever who is destined to an eternity to hell because of the pronouncement and the curse of sin and death. But that when we accept what Jesus did for us on the cross, but God, rich in mercy, for the great love he bore brought us to life, even uh, brought us to life with Christ, even though we were dead in our sins. It is by grace that you are saved. Well, it goes on. And in union with Christ Jesus, he raised us up and enthroned us with him in heavenly places. He enthroned us. Part one is we get eternal life. Part two is we go back to the garden's intention. And in the place of prayer, in the place of prayer, we begin to practice what we will do for all of eternity. On the, at the end of the age, we call it the millennium, when we shall come with Christ and he shall reign forever and ever, there will be a physical displacement of Satan out of this earth. There will be a new heaven and a new earth. Until then, we are practicing, so to speak, our ruling and reigning, and God fully intends that in the place of prayer, we've been given the authority to release heaven upon the earth. We do do not have to wait for heaven for this to happen. We don't have to wait for heaven for sickness to be pushed from our, our, our bodies. We believe in healing. We don't have to wait for heaven for eternal life. We believe eternal life comes now as we pray for our loved ones that they can experience eternal life now. We bring the power and the rule and the reign of heaven upon the earth in the place of prayers. We are enthroned with him. We're in union. That word means marriage. That means we're queen and king in heavenly places. My wife's going to come. Christina's coming now. She's going to uh, pray for the prayer request today. I want to challenge you. If you've heard this today, you are standing in his presence, not just to enjoy forgiveness of sins, though we do, not just to enjoy grace, though we do, but we are dressed in our garments and our robes of righteousness in the weeks to follow. We're going to learn the how of this so that we can begin declaring. We can begin praying in a way. It, it, it's, it's so simple. It's just conversation with God 
It's just talking with our Heavenly Father. But it's looking at a situation. Christina's going to pray for things today. And she's going to say, that's not right. Somebody shouldn't be sick. Somebody shouldn't be have anxiety today. Their marriages shouldn't be in shipwreck today. That is a result of sin entering this world and, 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 and Satan's rulership. We are pushing that back. The gates of hell will not prevail. That's what prayer does. It's just saying, God, that shouldn't be. I declare your will over that. In Jesus' name we pray. What does that mean? Second Chronicles says, if my people who are called by my name. He gave you his name. He gave it to you like marriage. You bear his name. If my people who are called by my name, the if is the condition of it changing. If we would pray, if we would humble ourselves and pray. What that means is if you know you have that power today, if I know I have that power today, meaning that authority to bring his desires to pass on the earth and we don't do it, isn't that the epitome of pride? Isn't that the epitome of pride that we would, we, would not, we would not take our place? But instead, in humility, we would say, Oh God, thank you that we have this power, this authority. That's my challenge to you today as we continue praying. And as, as Christina comes, let's seek his face in these days. If my people who are called by my name seek my face, if they will do this, I will hear their prayer, answer their prayer, and heal the land. God bless you today as you walk the land of the authority of prayer. Come on, let's believe God for answer to prayer. Honey, let's begin to pray for these things today. You know, we sang that song this morning, Spirit, lead me where my trust is without borders. And I just feel this morning that there are so many that are where your trust is without borders and our trust is in Jesus. Because, you know, in our times of battle, in our times of, of discouragement and, and fear, we have to trust Jesus because he sees everything we're going through. And I just want to encourage you this morning in our prayer um, uh, in our small group this week, we talked about prayer and, and we just said, you know, we had questions, what does it look like? But prayer is just a simple conversation with your father, your heavenly father, just as you would converse with your earthly father. You know, we just come to Jesus and we say, Jesus, can I just talk to you right now? Because I know you're going to listen. And we have some prayer requests this morning. We've got Tammy who's having a hard time sleeping, Brenda for herself and her son's family, for Jim Morris, for his niece, Sarah. Chantel for God's direction for family members and Roxanne for her mom and her sister for COVID tests. Uh, Julie for breakthrough and anxiety and depression and, and also finances and Andre that he can just continue working through this time where everything is shutting down. Uh, we also got a prayer create request this morning for Christine who is in ICU right now with, with blood clots. And you know, this is nothing for the father. The father can just move in and and heal in an instant let's just begin to pray for these prayer requests and let's just begin to believe and let's just begin to say father this morning we're trusting you because the world around us doesn't look that good but father you're still there and we can still trust you and we can still stand on your promises father we come to you this morning god and we're we're just believing god for people this morning for breakthrough this morning for for just father anxiety and depression god that you will break it off this morning god we're praying for financial situations father and and we're where times seem bleak right now for jobs that don't seem that stable, but God, you've got us and you've got those, Father, that are trusting and believing and standing and praying, God. Father, for people in ICU this morning, Father, that you can just reach down to those hospital beds, God. Blood clots are nothing for you. Cancer is nothing for you, Jesus. You are the almighty physician, God, and you can heal, God, and you can step in, God, where no other physician can, because God, you are the almighty physician. God, we're standing on your promises this morning. And in this life of COVID, God, where people are living in fear, God, you've just got it. You've got us. You've got them. You've got COVID, God. And you know, God, that you're working behind the scenes at all times, Father. For all these prayer requests that have come in this morning, Father, that you see them all, God. And those that we haven't seen, God, you see them. Father, we just pray for each and every prayer request. Father, we pray for healing. We pray for breakthrough. We pray for, for signs and, God, for, for just miracles, God, because you are the God of miracles, Father, and we're trusting you this morning. Father, we just thank you. 
for all that you're doing, for all we can see and all we can see, God, because we know you're moving and you're working and you're healing, and you're interjecting and you're, God, working on our behalf. Father, I just thank you this morning, Father, for all you're doing and all you continue to do, God. Father, when we are in waters where we can't see above our head, God, you're there and you're underneath us and you're holding us up. Spirit, lead us where our faith is without borders, where our trust is without borders, God. You got us, Father, and I pray for each and every person, Father, watching this morning. God, regardless of where they're at or regardless of what they're doing, God, you've got them. Thank you in your name we pray, amen. Don't forget, if you have a prayer request this morning, text it in, email us, leave a voice message on the church phone. We want to stand with you, believe with you, and just walk with you in this time. Um, when you feel maybe all alone, you have a whole family standing behind you and praying with you. Um, don't forget, we have our small groups this week. Um, join us on Facebook and YouTube at 7 p.m. on Tuesday night, where we'll have live worship. And then you'll go off to your small groups. And, um, you know, I just know with our worship small group, we just really find that we're connecting at this time. And uh, stay in touch with your small group family, because that is really our connection right now. Our bigger body is we can't gather in the church, but we have our small groups and we just want to keep in touch with those. You know, Harvest, these are weird times. I wish we could be together, all together. And I do believe a day is coming, but Jesus knows uh, exactly what the end looks like from the beginning. And I know that there are great things just over the horizon, although right now we can't see it. But Jesus has great things for Harvest and for Cornwall and for our region. Uh, we love you, Harvest. And uh, we can't wait to be back with you together. And um, but until then, this is, seems to be our new norm, and we're, we're just loving you from afar. Be blessed. Have a great week. We love you, and we'll see you soon.